won the victory. How many of you believe it? He has won the victory. I said, how many of you believe that God has already won the victory? Oh, I know it looks a little gloomy sometimes. I know it looks a little cloudy sometimes. But God has already won the victory. So what does that have to do with me, Pastor? What does that have to do with me, Pastor? That's what you're asking, right? Because he was victorious, the same power that lived and dwelt in him, the same power has come to dwell in us. So guess what, my friends? You and I are victorious now because of what Christ has done for us. Oh, y'all sound that be all right. I said, we are victorious because of him. I can't live good enough. You can't live good enough. None of us are worthy, but because of what Christ done on that cross. I have a right. You have a right. You have a right. To say hallelujah. I won the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. I wish I had somebody that would praise the Lord with me up in here. Up in here. inspiring us, causing us to get up and continue to fight the good fight of faith as we walk by faith and not by sight. You are our strength. You are our redeemer. You are our hope. That's why we put our hope and our trust in you. So look on us today. We pray for those that are sick among us. We know that you have their back. We know that you are in 
charge and we know and understand nothing that comes to us unless it's filtered through our Heavenly Father. So Father, if we have it, if it's came to us, whether it be sickness or illness or any kind of disease, we know that you are greater than all of it. And we claim the blood of Jesus to set us free, set every captive free, heal the broken heart, heal those that are sick among us. We speak it in the name of Jesus, and we decree that it's so in the precious name of Jesus. And we say, Lord, have your way. Have your way today. Have your way in us. Have your way in me. Have your way in this service. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for this time that we come to serve and worship together. Now bless us, Lord, even as your word is about to go forth. I pray that you would speak to every heart, soften up the hearts, soften up the deaf ears. Give us ears to hear and to receive what the word has to say to us. We give you praise for it in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. And thank God for all of you that are listening and are tuning in this morning virtually. We thank God for you, and I'm asking you to call your friends. We are back. Yes, we are. Call your friends, call your loved ones, and let them know greater faith is on the air. Call them and tell them to tune in. Right now, tune in. The Word of God is about to go forth to speak to us, to encourage us, and to motivate us to do better, to live better, and to trust our mighty, mighty God as we walk by faith and not by sight. So God bless you. We're certainly delighted that you are here listening in with us this morning. God's got a word for us. And here we are again to receive a word from the Lord. How many of you want to receive a word from the Lord? Amen. I'm here to receive a word from the Lord. Throughout the week, you know, you might have been battled and scorned. The old slew foot might have came in and threw a couple punches on you. But that's all right. We might have went down, but we're not out. Tell your neighbor, I might have went down, but I'm not out. Come on, tell somebody. I might have went down, but I'm not out. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I might have went down, but I'm not out. The old slew foot might have thought he had you, but he didn't. He don't have you. God have us in the palm of his hand. And listen. Nothing going to come to us unless God filters it out first. Amen? Amen. He promised, I'm not going to put no more on you than what you can handle. That's what my mama used to say. And I'm like, I don't see that in Scripture nowhere. But it's in there. <laughs> it's in there. Yeah, 10 and 13, I think it is. There's no temptation that has tempt come to you except that which is common to man. But God, somebody say, but God. but God, he is faithful that he will not allow you to be tempted or tried or tested above that you are able. But even with the temptation, even with the fall, even with that thing that came against you, he said, I'll still make a way for your escape. Amen. Right, oh, so y'all ought to clap right yeah. there. That was God. The word through Paul said, he'll make a way of our escape that right. we'll be able to bear it. So, hey, that's good news. Amen. Old Slewfoot doesn't like it, but God loves it. Amen? Amen. Because God has already made a way. Tell somebody, God has already God made a way. We, our job is to just have faith to walk in it. Why? Because we walk by faith, faith and not by, by sight. Now, I encourage somebody today, don't look at what you are. Don't look at what might have happened yesterday or day, last week or two weeks or a month ago. You look at God. You look unto Jesus. Y'all hear me? Amen. He is the author and he's the finisher. See, old Slewfoot, when I make a mistake, he try to nail me. Look what you've done. Look at you. You're not going nowhere fast. See there? You're not even saved. But you know what you need to tell him? The devil is a lie. I know God came into my heart and I'm on my way to heaven. And that little son said, I'm so glad. <laughs> so I'm not preaching. God bless you. You may be seated. The word of the Lord is coming from one of our own here at the church that has grown up with us, has been with us a long time. Matter of fact, he's been in my life 41 years. <laughs> Amen. Been in my life 41 years. And I tell you what, I love this guy. I love him because not only is he my biological son, I love him because he's God's chosen son too. How many of you know that makes a big difference? 
we can have biological kids, but sometimes they're not doing the right thing. Sometimes they get on our nerves. Sometimes they make us upset and all of that. But I'm grateful that God has blessed us to have a son that loves the Lord, worships God. He loves people and he serves people. And I'm going to get out of the way as he comes. Let's prepare our hearts to receive another anointed word from the Lord. And I'm asking you to receive Elder James Allen Hicks as he comes. Let's give him Amen. God a hand. Amen. 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 If you could please stand for a moment. Oh, and I forgot. So he's a single man. <laughs> If you can stand for a moment, we're, we're going to uh, do another quick prayer. But how many of you feel victorious? Amen. How many of you feel victorious? I, I know we all have stuff that's going on in our lives. Uh, Amanda mentioned, you know, we, we've taken some hits this year. Some of us have taken different hits and different losses. But how many of you still feel victorious Thank in the you. Lord? Amen. Even through the trials and tribulations Amen. and even through some of the hurting times, you know yes. that God has brought me through yes. and I am more, more than, than a conqueror. Yes. How many of you feel that? Yes. This, I'm speaking right now yes. just to the worshipers. If you're not really, if you don't feel like yourself as a worshiper, just give us a moment because I feel like, you know, I, I just uh, uh, celebrated a birthday yesterday. And you know what? With everything that's happened this year, I realized that I'm victorious. Yes. Even though I've taken some hits, even though I've been hurt, even though things have happened, God has called me to victory. Yes. He's called me to be victorious, so I want to take a moment to worship God for the victory. Even the victory that I haven't seen yet, God, you have called me to victory. So hallelujah to the Lamb of God who has called me to triumph. For you have called me to triumph. I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. And I will believe that, Lord, even through the hurt, even through the pain, even through the heartache, Lord. I am more than a conqueror. I am victorious through Jesus Christ. Say it out loud. I am victorious through Jesus Christ. I am victorious through Jesus Christ. Now give him a yell. Yell out to God. living on the street. I am yes. victorious. Victorious in Jesus, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah, God. Thank you. Thank you. And Lord, we thank you now, Lord, for the people of God. Lord, we thank you for this ministry. We thank you for those who are who are watching us, God, through, through live stream, Facebook, YouTube, wherever they're watching us. We thank you for them being in attendance, Lord. And we ask that the word of God would touch the lives and minds and souls and let them know they are victorious, God. Lord, put it in their spirit that I am victorious, God. I am victorious through you. Even if, even if I don't see it, God, I am victorious, Lord. And Lord, let us live in victory because we know that you have called us to triumph. Call you have caused us to trust, yes, God. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Thank Jesus' name God. we pray. Thank Amen. God. Give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know about you guys. I feel much better. Oh, yes. I feel much better. Uh, 1 Samuel. Thank you, Lord. The 23rd chapter. 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel 23. Still a uh, second part of what I call a, the wilderness experience. Right. Second part of the wilderness experience. Hallelujah. First Samuel 23rd chapter. We're just going to read four verses, but really we're just going to read a, a, just a small part of the fourth verse, actually. First Samuel 23, second part of the wilderness experience. Then they told David, saying, Behold, the Philistines fight against Kilah. And they robbed the threshing floors. Therefore David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go and smite these Philistines? And the Lord said unto David, Go and smite the Philistines and save Kelah. Amen. 
law. And David's men said unto him, Behold, we be afraid here in Judah. How much more then if we come to Keilah against the armies of the Philistines? And just this first sentence in verse 4 is going to be our focus. Then David inquired of the Lord yet again. David inquired of the Lord yet again. And that's what I want to speak to you about today is Yet, yeah. again, uh, he came back, he came back around yeah. and inquired of the Lord yet again. You may be seated. Amen. As we're talking about the wilderness experience and we're talking about, you know, um, using David as an example because a lot of us have been through a lot uh, this year and then the, the pan pandemic just added on to everything. And, and a lot of us, you know, the country and the world slowly coming out of it, but I was just hearing something about a, a Delta uh, uh, strain yeah. or something. Yeah. So who knows? We may, we may just be back in the heart of it. I don't know. We don't know. Only God knows. But we are yet victorious. Mm -hmm. But that's not that's not my focus. So in this scripture that we're talking about, we talked about last time the dream team. We talked about the dream team that God put together and David needed that in his wilderness experience. He needed a team. He needed people that were behind him mm -hmm. that would support him, and God gave him that. Mm -hmm. So now, as we go through the wilderness experience, now we're, we're getting further along in the story, and David heard that the Philistines were fighting against an area of Judah called Keilah. Uh -huh. He heard that the Philistines were over there, and they were fighting, and what they were doing was they were robbing the threshing floor. In, in a nutshell, the threshing floors is where they uh, uh, cre created the wheat, yeah. where they planted the wheat. And they would use the wheat to, obviously, the, to, to make bread and to feed the people and to sell it to other places. It was their way of living. Yes, yes. But the Philistines, you know, found this location and they started coming in and attacking the city and robbing the threshing floors. And they're taking, basically taking their money. Yes. And David heard about this. But keep in mind, we talked a little bit about what was going on at this time. David has his own stuff he's dealing with. All right, David is being chased by the government. All right. the, go the whole government of Israel is after yeah. him. The king has, has, has made a decree that, uh, you know, we want this guy. Dead or alive. Get him. So even though David was going through his own turmoil, mm -hmm. he still considered the needs of the other people. That's right. That's right. He didn't just focus on himself. So. And as Christians, we can't just be worried about our own issues and our own circumstances. Listen, with it, like I said earlier, with everything going on, we're all going through something. Yes, yes. We're all going through something. That's why, I, in general, I try to give people the benefit of the doubt. Yes. If I go to a restaurant and the waitress, the waiter is, is a little upset and they, they don't see, they seem a little off, or I go to the grocery store and the cashier's off, I give them the benefit That's of right. the doubt because I don't know what they just yeah, dealt with. They might have just came out of COVID. Yeah, their mom right. might have just passed away from COVID. They might have, they, this may be their last day on the job. You don't know you what don't they're know. going through. Because we all are dealing with our own issues. So we have to be sensitive to the issues and the needs of others. Yes. Especially if we call ourselves believers. Amen. Amen. Because that's what Jesus did, right? That's right. That's Jesus right. didn't just focus on himself. He helped other people. And right. David is, learning, is doing the same thing. He's not just focused on his issue. I mean, he has a serious issue. But he sees somebody else in need and he says, I'm going to help. Yes, yes. So he, he notices the situation. He doesn't just focus on his issue. He sees their issue. He says, I need to help. So what does David do? It says that David uh, inquired of the Lord first. Yes. So before he made a decision, he inquired of the Lord first. first. Amen. That's right. So why is that important? Because a lot of times we go ahead and make a decision and then inquire of the Lord after. Yes, right. That's right. <laughs> and so then we wonder why it didn't work out. And then we want to blame God that it didn't work out. But wait a minute. Did we inquire of the Lord first? That's right. Or did, did we make a decision and then, you know, hope that he would co-sign after the fact? All right. All right. That's backwards. That's not how it goes. Right. You're supposed to inquire of the Lord first. Yes, yes. Okay? Inquire of the first. Because the word tells us that in all our ways we acknowledge him and allow him to direct our path. Yes. Yes. We don't, you know... Blaze our own path and, and then hope he follows behind and figures them out. No, it's backwards. That's backwards. That's backwards. So he he goes and he inquires of the Lord first and he yes. asks God. Yes. And God gave him a clear answer. Mm -hmm. Clear answer. Smite the Philistines.
times, save key lock. That's right. Clear answer. Here we go. I got my answer. I know what I need to do. But then came another problem. David's men had a different opinion. Right. <laughs> now, how I'm seeing this is I'm seeing, um, you know, he, he has, uh, we spoke about this last time, about 400 guys. And I'm seeing, you know, all these guys, they probably have maybe a group that kind of speaks for yeah. the, the team. You know, all 400 of them are talking. He has maybe 10 or 15, however many that kind of speak for the group. Right. So David goes to them. I'm seeing him. He tells them the plan and say, hey, I, you know, I went to God. And, and he says, hey, we're going go to we're gonna go to battle with these guys. And we're going to save, save this town in Judah called Kelah. We're going to do it. Right. We're going in. So in verse 3, it reads, and David's men said unto him, Behold, we be afraid here in Judah. How much more than if we come to Keilah against the armies of the Philistines? So th these are his men now. These are the guys that are fighting for you. That's right. And they're telling you that they're afraid. <laughs> but now, why were they afraid? Let's, let's just figure out what, what's going on. Let's figure out why were they afraid. First thing is this. If we go back to, if you were there at the last lesson, he put this team together. This would be their first battle as a team. Okay. You know, I call them the dream team. This would be their first battle. And remember, you know, these, these guys weren't all necessarily warriors. That's right. These guys had a lot of issues going on. We talked about that last time. They had a lot of stuff they were dealing with. So they're not necessarily warriors. So they've not seen battle before, at least not in this thing. So they're like a little nervous. You kind of sending us out here. We, we haven't, we're not, we're not tried and true yet. Right. <laughs> we're nervous. We're kind of scared. Makes sense, right? Second of all, like I mentioned earlier, they're already being hunted by the whole right. uh, country of Israel. That's right. So they're like, well, wait a minute, buddy. So now you want us to, to, to go and, and save these people and expose ourselves, fight the Philistines, but then we already got these other guys trying to get us. This, is, this doesn't really make sense, man. What, what, what do you, what, what's the, this idea is not lining up. So that's the second thing. And then the third thing is, at this point, David's leadership skills have not been tested. That's right. He's not sent them to battle. This is the first time he's sending them to battle. Mm -hmm. What if David's wrong? What if he sends us out here and we get destroyed? What if we all die? That's right. You know, what if what if Saul finds us and then he comes and he destroys us? What, there's so many variables, so much stuff yeah. that can happen that could go wrong. David, we're afraid, man. That's right. We're afraid. We already got enough on our plate. Let them handle their own issues. Why, why are we even getting involved? Makes sense, right? It, it, it's very logical. Yes, it is. So they're afraid. So this fear that the men have is putting doubt in the heart of David. All right. All right. Because these are his men. These are the guys. Hey, I, I'm trained these guys, and I brought them up, and, and I know they're good, but they're, they're afraid. They're nervous, and it's causing me to kind of doubt what's going on. So David's probably thinking, what if they're right? What if they're right? What, what if they may have a point? Maybe, maybe they're right about this. What if, you know, what if I heard God wrong? Maybe, maybe I heard it. Maybe I, miss, I misheard. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I, I was off. But, but what if I heard God right, but maybe it's just not the right time? Maybe I'm supposed to do it later. You know, I just kind of wait it out a little bit. I don't know. And that brought me to a question of, have you ever been doubtful about what God has called you to do? Have you ever been doubtful about that? At one moment you was calm, you're confident and secure, like yeah, but then you run into an issue and it's like, well, are you sure about that, Lord? I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I should wait. Maybe this is not the right time. Maybe, you know, God's calling you to start a ministry within your church, and and you're like, yeah, I want to do this, but then you you get a little nervous, mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, maybe I shouldn't do that. If he's calling you to open a business and, and kind of do your own thing, but then, you know, you look around and it's a pandemic still and, and there's a Delta virus that's coming out and, oh, maybe maybe this is not the right time. Maybe God's calling you to quit your job. He wants you to step out on faith and do something else. Lord, why would I do that? Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. I am afraid. <laughs> so there are times where, you know, the enemy will, will put things in your way to cause that doubt. And you know what? A lot of times that thing that he'll put in your way is other people. It's other people. Because other people will start kind of getting in your ear and start telling you this and telling you that. And it makes you question, yes. hey, did I really hear from God? That's right. That's right. 
And these people may mean good, but they just don't know what God put in your heart. All right. They just know by their own logic. So they could mean good. They may, they may be trying to tell you what they feel is best, but that does not mean that that's the way you should go. Because if God tells you something, that, that should really be the final decision. But other people will put that in our mind. So it says that they were afraid. It says these men were afraid. And fear brings forth doubt. And doubt can cause you to make the wrong decision. Doubt can cause you to make the wrong decision. Fear can bring about doubt, and doubt can cause you to make the wrong decision. You follow me so far? Amen. So David is at a crossroads. He's at a crossroads. Do I listen to God, or do I listen to man? Do I listen to God, or do I listen to man? Now, you could be thinking, that's an easy decision. Of course you listen to God, right? That's, that's simple. What kind of question is that? It seems easy. But when the world is telling you one thing, sometimes it's hard to trust the word and the plan of God. Because sometimes the world seems to be talking louder than the voice of God. And then you hear the world on a regular basis. You hear it on your TV. You hear it on your radio. You hear it from your friends. You hear it from your family. You hear it from everywhere. And a lot of times if you read the Bible, you know, God, God would tell his word. Sometimes he'd only say it once or say it every five, six years or 20 years. You know? <laughs> so, so if you didn't catch it the first time, you might be out of gas. <laughs> but you hear, you hear the, the, the world's version often. So if God says, quit your job and start a business, man says, where are you going to get the money? Where are you going to get to work for you? You don't have that education. Who else in your family owns a business? How you gonna get it started? Where you gonna get your LLC from? You didn't even get none of that SBA money. How you so how you gonna do this? That's what man says, right? That's right. <laughs> you know, God says, start a children's choir at your ministry. You know, they, they need that. Start it up. Who gonna show up? Your kids ain't coming. Your parents don't care. Your kids can't even sing. <laughs> Mr. Music, James Hicks ain't going to want to show up, <laughs> which might be true. <laughs> he, the, the, the voice of man or the enemy will get in your head and, and, and give you that other side, and then it seems louder than the voice of God that's trying to tell you this is what you need to do. Yes, yes. So what did David do? Did he listen to the men? Uh, did, did he make a, a rash decision and, and you know, just, oh, I'm just going to figure this out on my own? Did he flip a coin? <laughs> heads, heads I do it, head, tails I don't. Okay. Uh, did he ask uh, 50 other people somewhere else? Go somewhere else. Get, let, me, let me get some advice from other people. <laughs> no, in verse 4 it says, Then David inquired of the Lord, yet... David inquired of the Lord yet again. He went back to God and asked, I need you to reconfirm this. Yes, yes. What is it that you want me to do? And what we have to understand that it is okay yes, to double back or to start over if you're not sure. It's okay. Nobody expects you to always get it right the first time. Right. Nobody expects you to always be 100% sure the first time. Even God doesn't expect that. Right. God says you can come back yet again. Yeah. And you can ask me yet again. And I will confirm it for you yes. yet again. He's telling us that we can do that. Even in Revelations 2 and 5, it tells us about sometimes we have to go back and do our first works again. Sometimes we have to do our first work over. Sometimes it's not done right. Sometimes we're not sure. Sometimes we may mess it up. And if we do, guess what? We can do it. Yeah, again. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But, but sometimes we get it in our heads that that's a problem. That, oh, if I didn't get it right the first time, then oh, maybe, maybe it shouldn't be done. Maybe, that, maybe I shouldn't do it because the first time didn't work out. Or, or I wasn't sure, I'm having doubts, and so on and so forth. And maybe I shouldn't ask it anymore, or whatever. I should keep it to myself. 
No. If God told you to do it. Even if it doesn't work out the first time, or even if you're not sure, even if you're having doubts, he's telling us that it is okay, okay. to come to me yet again. Yeah. It is okay to try the idea yet yeah. again. Okay. Let's not give up on what God has put in our hearts. Amen. So when it comes to this yet again, what is it that you need to do yet again? What is it that you need to do yet again? So what is it that you've given up on? What is it that you, you, you know God called you to do it. You know he put it in your heart 10 years ago. But you, you, you set it down and you moved on because of what somebody else said. Something you saw Dr. Phil say. <laughs> something you saw Oprah say. I don't know. Oh, help us. Yonla Van Zandt. Maybe she said something. You said, oh, yeah, she must be right. So what, her voice trumps the voice of God. What is it that you need to do yet again? Is it, is it apologizing to a friend? Did God put it in your heart and say, you need to go, you need to get that right. You need to apologize, you did wrong. But then, somebody got in your ear, they ain't going to apologize to you. They don't care nothing about you. You ain't heard from them in 10 days. They, 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 they not even thinking about you. Why would you do that? And then guess what? You don't do it. But guess what? Does that make it because it's been two weeks, three months, eight years? Does that make the word of God null and void? No, it doesn't. No. It doesn't make the word of God null and void. He says, my word is true. Yeah. He says, this, this, his, his word going to stand even as the, as the world perishes. That's right. That's so if he said it, he's called you to do it, if it's five years later, that's still on your to-do list. Yeah. It doesn't get crossed out because time has passed. You know, it's not like the stuff on your credit. Yeah. Like, let me give you about seven years and it ain't going to be there no more. <laughs> it's not your credit. This is the word of God. Amen. So is it apologizing to a friend? Is it apologizing to a co-worker? Is it reapplying for a job that God told you that was yours? Right. You applied one time and it didn't work out. But you know, I know God called. I know this is it. But if he told you that's it, why would you just apply one time? That's right. If it's it, I need to apply every time it comes up again and again and again, yet again, yet again. Yet again, and yet again, because God said, this is what it is. Let's dive a little deeper. Is it forgiving your spouse? Spouse did something, said something, whatever, they didn't make the biscuits right or something like that. I don't know what y'all mad folks go through. But um, whatever it is, you've been holding a grudge. And God has put it in your spirit and said, you need, to, you need to forgive them. You need to forgive them. Even them. You need to forgive them. And then you go to your best buddy and say, yeah, I think I'm going to forgive them. Why would you do that? <laughs> that don't make no sense. Did she ask you for forgiveness? Has she made the biscuits right since that last time? Is she still messing them up? And she on top of that, she got your shoes, and then she threw them in the closet, and you can't even find them. Why would you forgive them? And all kind of stuff on it that's not even part of the issue. And guess what? Now you go unforgiveness. All right? Now you go weeks to week and not talking all this kind of stuff. Oh, okay. We have to do what God has called us to do. Yes, yes, yes. We have to do what God has called us to do. But then sometimes as a Christian, it can get even deeper than that. There are times when we need to seek God. Yet again. Yeah. We need to seek God. Sometimes as a Christian, you, you, get, you get a little uh, uh, lazy. All right, let's just call it what it is. You get lazy and you feel like, oh, because I'm a Christian, I, 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 I did that a week ago, I did that a uh, while long ago, and, and, and you kind of take it for granted. But God is saying that we need to continue to seek him. We need yeah. to continue to follow after him, to chase after him, yeah. yet again. That's something that, as a Christian, we can't back up off. But sometimes we tend to do that. I think God is even telling us that, hey, you need to continue to seek after me, yet Again, Isaiah says, seek the Lord while he may be found. So seeking is a continuous thing. So we have to remember that yet again means that we continuously do that. We continuously it has to be a part of what we do. It has to be a part of us as a Christian that I continue to seek God. I continue to go after the things of God. I continue to learn of God. It's not a one-time deal. It's not a five-time deal. It's not a 20-time deal. It's not a thousand-time deal. It's a continuous deal. And this word may be coming to you saying, hey, 
yet again, I need you to start seeking God. I need you to start praying more. I need you to start fasting more. I need you to, to get on your knees and pray yet again. We also need to start truly worshiping God. Yet again. And I'm not talking about just that whole daily lifestyle thing. I'm talking about that thing from your soul. That thing out of your belly. That thing where that brings tears to your eyes. That thing that, that before you know it, it's been 30 minutes, it's been an hour, and you haven't realized that you just you just fell out in worship. Yeah. When's the last time that you had that kind of moment with God? Maybe God is saying, I need you to do that yet again. I need you to worship me yet again. That worship from your soul, from your spirit. The Bible talks about out of your belly flows, rivers, rivers, rivers of living water. But how is it going to flow if, if, you're not, if you're not doing it, if you're not worshiping, if you're not getting on your knees? Well, how is it going to flow? Yet again. In 1 Samuel 3 and 6, it says that the Lord called yet again unto Samuel. This is when Samuel was young. And the Lord kept calling him, and he thought he thought it was Eli, but yeah. it turned out to be the voice of the Lord. So God will continue to call you. Yes. He will continue to reach out. He will continue to summon you. It said, he, yet again, he called out to Samuel. Mm -hmm. So God will do the same thing for us. He will continue to call us. Yeah. But when it's our turn, All right. uh -oh. then we give up. We're, we're, well, I'm too tired. I just got off work. You know how many hours I put in? I just got off work. I don't feel like reading my Bible. You know, my, my Netflix show, you was coming on. I need to, I need to catch up on that. I'm behind. Mm -hmm. I can do the other stuff later. Isn't it funny how <laughs> other things in our life is easier for us to do it yet again? <laughs> the new season of Ozark is out. I got to watch it. I can't miss it. I got to watch it. But then when it comes to the things of God, it gets put on the back burner. Anything else when when you know your, your your birthday come around like mine did, and yet again it's time to celebrate. It's time to do something. You, you make that a priority. But what about the things of God? What about what God has called you to do? What about the word that He's put in your heart? When are we going to make that a priority? When are we going to do that yet again? We prioritize everything else and everybody else, but sometimes the things of God goes lacking. Uh, anybody with me? Yeah. Yeah. Make sure I'm on the right track. Make sure I'm on the right track. So, we have to seek God yet again. And we have to take it seriously. It can't be something that we continuously put on the back burner, but we have to reach out to him. It says, seek him while he yet may be found. My last verse of scripture I want to go to, if you'll go with me to Jonah. Go with me to Jonah. Uh, we'll go to the second chapter. Last verse of scripture. We're going to wrap this up. Jonah, the second chapter. All right. So we got Jonah, the second chapter. And they call this the prayer of Jonah. He had a reason to pray. Mm -hmm. So Jonah, the second chapter, I'll just read uh, verses 1 through 4. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his God, out of the fish's belly, and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. For thou hadst came, but thou hadst cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas. And the floods come past me about. All thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight. Yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. Jonah said, yet I will look again. Jonah was at his worst state. Yes, yes. He was at his worst state. The bottom of the bottom. And some of us in this wilderness experience, we've went through some of our worst state. Maybe even financially. Maybe the people that we've lost. 
maybe even, you know, with the whole social distance thing. I've been hearing about um, even kids, you know, that had to do the virtual school, they didn't do as well. So right. sometimes some of those kids got held back yeah. because of, because of, you know, not being able to do as well, not being able to keep up. Yeah. So that's tough on a lot of parents. That's tough on a lot of kids having to deal with this. But in verse 4, this is his darkest hour. He, he messed up. Jonah messed it up. And, and I always find it interesting that in, in, in verse 17 of the first chapter, it says he was down there uh, three days and three nights. Right. And then uh, the first verse or two, it says then. So it took him three days and three nights to do this, to start praying. Because he's stubborn. But how often do we do that? Right. How often do we push off our, our yet again? But he finally humbled himself and says, yet will I look again towards thy holy temple. Even in our, our worst moments, because, you know, with David, you know, he was making a decision. And he, he, he had to come to that point where he seek God yet again. But even at the bottom of the bottom, even at the pit, even in our lowest moment, sometimes, you know, the, the, the depression and the anxiety and all the issues cause us to, to not think about God. and cause us to focus everywhere else and just focus on the issue. Yes, yes. But God is saying, I want you to reach out to me yet again. I, I want you to start praying to me. Yet again, I am the, I'm your good shepherd. I'm your father. You should want to come to me. Yes, yes. But you need to do it yet again. Yes. That one time wasn't enough. That fifth time might not have been enough. That 25th time might not have been enough. Yes. We have to do it yet again yes. and again and again. I mean, but to me, it's no different. If you're looking to, uh, you're trying to buy a car, right? And you really want a car, you go to the, to the, to the one shop, uh, the one dealership, and, you know, you don't see the car you want. You leave it and say, oh, well, I guess I'm supposed to get a car. At the end of that, go home and keep riding your bicycle. <laughs> you're going to keep looking. You're going to go to the dealership, after dealership. Then you're going to look online. And then you're going to look at smaller dealerships. Then you might even look outside of the city. You're going to do all of this stuff yet again and again and again. Why is it any different when it comes to the things of God? Why do we think after we seek him once or we prayed once about an issue or we did it three times about an issue that that should be enough? Lord help us. It's not enough in any other situation. That's right. I mean, over, over the last month, I've been looking for different restaurants to eat at, something different. You know how many times I've looked to find different places to eat at? I was like, I'm not stopping until I find what I'm looking for. Why aren't we that diligent about the things of God? But this other stuff that doesn't matter We'll do that over and over and over and over and over again. You mess around, you get divorced, and like, oh, I want another spouse. How many times are you going to be on all these dating websites and social media things? Keep looking and looking and looking and looking and looking. And looking. Oh, yeah, I hit some people on that one. <laughs> so, we'll be so diligent. <laughs> I, I wish our social media people could see these folks. <laughs> you will be so diligent about... The things of the world, but then when it comes to the things of God, that is when we loosen up. Yes, Lord help. As I wrap this up, David was confused and he had doubts, but he inquired of the Lord yet again. And not only did God give him the answer again, he gave him the answer again, but later, David got the victory. Yes. Because he listened to the voice of the Lord. He didn't just start, he didn't listen to the men. He didn't listen to men. He didn't get anybody else's thoughts. He listened to the voice of the Lord, and eventually he got the victory. Yes, yes. But that's because he was willing to seek God yet again. Yeah. Amen? Amen. If you please stand. Amen. If you please stand. As we speak about yet again, if we, uh, you know, back in this wilderness experience, so much has been going on, and our praise and worship leader, uh, just, just you know, just brought out just one of the many things that we've been dealing with with the loss of uh, Juliet Waffle in, in our house and our family here, and that that was one that hurt. But I think even Miss Waffle would want us to continue to seek God yes. yet again, yes. yet again, and we have to do that. As we bow our heads. Father God, Lord, we thank you for the Word of God. We thank you for your people that are here, and we thank you for teaching us, Lord that you want us to reach out to you. You want us to see yes. you yet again. You want us to pray to you yet again. God, you want us to, to do the thing that you called us to do yet again. Yes. Even if it didn't work out the first time, even if we didn't get the answer that we wanted, you're calling us to do it yet again. But God, we also want you to save us 
Yes. Yet again, God. Yeah. Forgive us, God. Yes. Yet again, Lord. Restore us the joy yes. that we might have lost with everything going on. Yet yes. again, God. We're asking you, God, to do your perfect work within yes. us. Yes. Yet again, yes. Lord. Lord, we need more and yes. more and more of your power. More and more yes. of your spirit, God. Yes. More of your anointing, God. Do yes. it for us no. yet again. Yes. God, even in our ministry, Lord, fill yes. this house, God, with your spirit. Yes. Yet again, Lord. Yes. Do it again, God. We know you can do it again, God. Yes. We are trusting and we are believing in yes. faith, God, that you will do it yet again, God. Yes. Not only in our household here, Lord, but for those who are, yes. are with us, God, on social media and the different avenues. Yes. Do it for them yet again. Heal their homes yet again, Father. Yes. Lord, restore to them the joy yet again. Yes. Lord, rebuild their marriage. Rebuild their relationships yes. yet yes. again, God. Yes. Even, yes. We know even if you've done it five times, sometimes it needs to be done more and more and yes. more. But we trust God yes. that you can do it. Yes. Yes. We just have to have faith to believe it. we got to get away from our fear. Yes. Get away from 